I remember when the G Unit Spinner with Buck was missing. Buck was in Chicago. Cabrini Greens, all these. They could have got killed trying to politic for that change that. Ain't no broke. Tell my cash field got ten keys. Your squad ain't on out of town. Look what they happened. Look what happened. All I remember is a a, a gunshot. And he's got his hand on my piece back here and shooting at the ground saying, give me that. This is how we playing this shit. Man. Whenever any of you in our town, man, you should have had us on your squad. Me, Look, Sorry. what's wrong, you buck? Hey, back, Will. Man. Fuck, you, fuck you know you can't Man, this is how we playing. Anytime, any of you Buck, if this get out, your shit on sale. The uncut and ad-free version of this documentary is available right now on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality. The link is in the description below. All my documentaries are available on there uncut and ad-free. And please don't forget to leave a like on this video as it helps us out a lot. Thank you. Hip-hop and chains are synonymous. They've been embedded into the hip-hop art form and culture since the beginning. Showing off your chain meant you were on top of your game in hip-hop, that you've achieved ultimate success but with that comes a lot of eyes and a lot of envious people that aren't always happy to see you shine in hip-hop your chain is your reputation so someone taking it meant taking away your respect and all that you worked hard for there are a lot of hip-hop stories where rappers or their entourage get robbed of their chains and then have their chains hoisted like a trophy for public glory and this story is no different this story with the Gina Spinner chain is one of the most interesting stories in hip hop. And the reason why this story is one of the most interesting is because the story comes with a lot of powerful people being involved and lots of different sides to the story, which all great tales stem from. G Unit in 2004 was on top of their game. 50 Cent was the biggest artist in the world and his crew was no different. After releasing their debut album, Beg for Mercy, they had branded G-Unit to the world in such a way that every fan was purchasing everything they were releasing. One of the unique marketing tools used was the G-Unit spinner chain. It was iconic in its time because of its spinning and just having a unique design, which Lloyd Banks himself hand drew. The chain was so iconic in 2003 that during the release of their Beg for Mercy album, four lucky fans had a chance to win the chain, which was worth $12,500. It was essentially like a Willy Wonka golden ticket. Young Buck was the main artist with the chain on. 50 Cent had it on him during the early stages of the Beg for Mercy album promo run, but for the most part, Young Buck would be the one having it most of the time. In 2004, Young Buck and Lloyd Banks were gearing up to drop their debut albums, with Lloyd Banks releasing Hugga for More on June 29, 2004, and Young Buck releasing Straight Outta Cashville on August 24th, 2004. During that summer of 2004, Buck and Banks were touring all over America to promote their album, and on July 23rd, 2004, they stopped by Chicago. After their radio interviews and concert, Young Buck and Lloyd Banks head to their hotel rooms to call it a night. 50 Cent around this time would tell his artists not to explore the areas they were visiting with their jewelry on, but just do the work they have to do and go straight to the hotel rooms. This is what Banks and Buck did. However, Young Buck's close friend and right-hand man, Dite, had different plans that night. Dite was raised in the same area of Tennessee as Young Buck. The two grew up together, and at one point, Dite even saved Young Buck's life. When Buck blew up, he brought DT along with him, who then became his right-hand man and hype man for his concerts. At this time, Young Buck got a new chain for himself, which was the YB Spinner chain. So 50 Cent opted to give the G-Unit Spinner to DT for promo. DT would then be on tour with Young Buck as his hype man with the G-Unit Spinner, even having it on at the 2004 BET Awards. While in Chicago, DT says he had a friend with him that knew Chicago and they had asked if they wanted to go out. Buck was preoccupied with a female while DT wanted to go see the nightlife in Chicago. So DT snuck in Buck's hotel room and grabbed the G unit spinner for a night out. We was actually on the anger management tour uh, promo run and this particular city they had said no after party. And I ain't never been to Chicago so I was like nah I'm yeah, yeah. gonna get some yeah. or something. I ain't yeah. never been to Chicago <laughs> you feel? Just so happened we did the radio interview it's like 10 11 o'clock Time to get the kid like 2 o'clock in the morning, like 12 31. About 12 31. So we in Buck room. He got a little company, whatever. So we sitting up in the room talking to shit. At the time, he was wearing, I was wearing the GU and the spinner okay. at the shows. But this particular time, he had it. Okay. I guess, I guess. And he had it sitting on his table. 
And uh, I would, you know, me antsy. I'm ready to get out, see the city. And uh, one of our guys from Nashville, which he's, he, he died. Uh, rest in peace to little man. man. He uh, said, Tay, hey, my cousin stay up here. You know what I'm saying? And he wanna, we can get out if you want to get out. Yeah. And I was like, man, yeah, these sitting up in here like some goddamn statues. So come on. <laughs> so he come up here and uh, he showed me the piece. Okay. I said, okay, he do got it. Mm -hmm. So we shooting this shit, bump, plum, plum, plum. Like he like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a club. My nigga know with some clubs that we we can get out. So I'm like, alright, bitch. So we sitting there chilling. I said, nah, I need to get that chain because if I get that, we ain't gonna pay to get in no club. Yeah, yeah. Cause they know we in the city. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. So Buck is, uh, is talking to Lev Joe. So, so, so the girl call his name, and he go upstairs. Why you do that? Give me that. Yeah. And, and, and got up out the room. DT and his friends decided to go to Caprini Greens, which at the time was known as a very violent area in Chicago, but it was the only place that had a nightclub open past midnight. They pulled up at the Dragon Room in Caprini Greens, and DT walks out with his homies. The security notices it's a G Unit affiliate and welcomes them. However, there were other people there that had different plans. We ended up going out, we put up at this club, man. And I never forget that it was a lot of people outside by the front door in the line. And they was just hanging out. And there was so many people that I'm like, okay, it's active. Like, this ain't in no alley type shit. So I'm like, when we pull up, I'm hanging out the window. What's that? G in the film. Oh, I got the chain. So the security guard at the club door see me he said oh y'all good y'all good y'all come on just pull over y'all good y'all can come in so i'm like ah, yeah 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 we'll pull over right here you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and my man like i was gonna park the truck tight <laughs> yeah, so i'm yeah, like nah yeah. nah nah just pull over right here on the side of the club bro because we it's by the front door we good you know what yeah. i'm saying because there was a lot of people out there right so i said just pull over right here so we can get back to the truck easy exit so we pull up right there and but we pulled that i wasn't thinking no it's nothing can really happen like that. So we get out of the truck, we chilling for a minute, you know, bitches behind the bay, what's that? So she said, so so one of the girls was talking to me. And she kept looking past me. You feel me? And I had the chain on, so I'm looking at her eyes, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the fuck are you looking at? So when I look back, it's like maybe three, was it three or four? Like three or four guys was crossing the street, mm -hmm. coming our way though. Okay. So when they cross the street, I go on and turn around. She yeah. stopped talking to me. I go on and turn around. So we looking, looking at them shit. So they come. And I should have knew something was weird because when they walk across the street, they walk through us. You feel what I'm saying? Like one nigga actually walked straight through me and Manny, like on some shit. I'm like, what the f is that about? What's right, up? right. So Manny looking too. So the niggas walk through us. They walking towards the club though. Like yeah. they finna go in. Yeah. So once we see, they walk through us, then they looked or whatever, and then they turn around, kept walking. So we looking. After they, after they turned the corner, we were like, all right, Fuck it, turn yeah. back around, start shooting. Yeah. Man. About five seconds later, it wasn't long. Man, them boys on that main, main influence said, give me that. When I heard him say, give me that, he shot first, though. Damn. Boom, by my foot. Yeah. So I seen a spark, and I was like, damn, they shooting out here. So I see the spark, and then I hear a nigga say, give me that. So he got his hand on my necklace, and he's shooting at the ground. He shot the ground first. So when he said that, I didn't know what was going on. So I grabbed the necklace like, nah, I don't know yeah, what's yeah. going on. I'm trying to get low, too, because yeah. I can't see nobody. But I hear a nigga saying, give me that. So when I grabbed a chain like that, he shot. Then Manny shot. So Manny yeah. must have seen what was going on. To try. He shot. When he shot, boom, Manny shot. Boom. Then he shot again. Boom. Then Manny shot again. Boom. It was four shots. So... That first shot, when he grabbed my necklace, I was going down and my necklace was coming up because he was trying to take it off. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I'm holding it like, ah. Yeah. So when he shot that second shot, I looked down, that barrel was that long. You know what I said, man? We don't take this motherfucking necklace and get the f away from me. You right, know? right. He had to do is show me that ball. Right, right, I was saying, right. here. You got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look. <laughs> So I seen the barrel the second time after the second shot, and that one I went on and flicked it off. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? He grabbed it and went, ran on up the street. You know? Yeah. Manny 
one of the guy who was with us, he had got shot in the hand. I got you. And yeah. Manny's gun was sitting back. Yeah. So it was it had jammed. You feel what I'm saying? So it was the grace of God because shout out to Chicago, man, because I heard when they get you, they don't shoot at the ground. Right, right, right. You feel what I'm saying? That first right. one's supposed to be in. Right. But I, that's why I said it probably wasn't about me. It was about right. the chain. After getting robbed, DT says he headed straight for the hotel room. And the following morning, he told young Buck about the incident. Buck then said he would have to call 50 Cent and tell him what happened. Yeah, we get back to the hotel and uh, I, tell, I tell Buck that I just got, you know, somebody just took the chain. And Buck's like, took what chain, Tay? I'm like, the G unit spinner. He like, the G unit spinner? Tay, no, Tay. You weren't even supposed to have the chain. How you get the chain, Tay? You know, and I'm like, man, listen, it's already happened. You think I want to hear this shit from you right now? He's like, man, you finna tell 50. You finna tell him, man. I ain't telling him. So I'm like, I ain't call him. You know what I'm saying? So I just remember him calling Fifth, and uh, I'm watching Buck's face. And he's like, yo, Fifth, man, the chain just got took, man. And I guess Fifth like, what chain? What chain? He like, the G unit chain. And then I just see Buck face like. I'm finna let you talk to Tay real quick. So he give me the phone and Fifth's like, are you all right? And I'm like, yeah. You know, he said, uh, well, that's really the, all that matters that you all right, you know, but y'all wasn't supposed to be out either, Tay. You know, what made you do that? And I'm just, I just wanted to kick it. He said, all right, this is, it's okay. As long as you, okay, it's cool. Give Buck back the phone. So yeah, I give Buck back the phone. And all I knew was they sent Tay motherfucking ass home immediately. 50 Cent, according to Spider Loke, at the time didn't want to speak on the phone much about the incident. He wanted to talk to Buck in detail about it in person. He felt like there was too much street activity going on relating to the chain, and he was worried about his phones being tapped by the feds. Young Buck then decided to stay in Chicago for a few days to try and retrieve the stolen chain. Because of him staying in Chicago, he missed his Milwaukee stop for promotion. Ultimately, Buck failed to get the chain back and headed back to Atlanta. DT says he was sent home from being on tour with G-Unit for roughly four months after the incident. In the meantime, the people who robbed G-Unit of their chain decided to do multiple interviews bragging about the incident. And the first interview they did was with Don Diva Magazine, issue 19. Don Diva asked them this, why don't you let the people know exactly what's going on? And the robber said this. Well, basically, we caught the guy outside the club snoozing with the G-Unit shit on. We was really upset that the guy ain't want to let us in the club because of how we dressed. By that time, we saw these guys, and they ain't want to let them guys in either. So in the meantime, we run up on them and take the chain from them. So from that point on, of course, we flee the scene or whatever. And from that point on, we try to sell them off because it's worthless to us. The chain's worthless. So of course, I'm going to put my word in with a few guys in the street to see guys who want it. So from that point, we gave the guys the opportunity to get their shit back. So it was out of my reach from that point on. Because I ain't no rapper, I put it in someone's hands in the streets and let the guys in the streets handle it. All I wanted was 100000 for the chain. And then my man called me back and was like, that's too much for the chain. They was his people. He got a call from LA from his cousin or whatever game who be with them he was going square the situation out i told him i want twenty thousand from the motherfuckers and they can work the rest of that shit out and the rest of the interview is basically these robbers saying that they want a fair chance in the music industry they want a chance to shine and do their own thing and that's why they took the chain they don't really care about the music they just like the fame and glory from it so they can get some eyes on them so that they can release their own music and do their own thing. They also then appeared on Open World Films DVD interview where they're bragging about having the chain and just talking about what they're going to do with it. Hey, squad ain't on out of town. Look what they have. Look so what happened. Guy, right? Now your career on the line. Cause Ja Rule finna get your I'm chain. To, you no. dumb. That's that how we playing this. Man. Whenever any of you in our man. town, man, you should have had us on your squad. Way, look, Sir. what's wrong, bro? Hey, we you know you can't. Man, this how we playing. Anytime, any of you in our town. Buck, if this guy, your shit, y'all guarantee the safe trip. If you 
get up with us before y'all get here and don't holler at us. This, this what is going down, man. This what happened. Y'all already know how this go, man. You lost. Lost. Oh, yeah, we winning up here, boy. Your ass lost. You lost. This ain't even half the people got it, so you know what I mean. I was, you know, we'll be alright. Got to chop pops up. We want them to get a label. Got to eat. Pops out here. You don't want. Everything gonna happen, boy. Let y'all see no real. I'll just look at this. Keep looking at this. Keep looking at. Keep watching this band. Zoom in. Zoom in. I'm finna go work out and get my swole on. <laughs> Four so pounds, pound. that's all we need. Four yeah, pounds, you niggas been 250, 300, all that. Four pounds, all you need. Yeah. Chicago, the real going. That's why you that up. Don't want us all in this shit, man. Let us up in this motherfucking game, man. You know what I'm saying? This shit real. We trying to go legit with you. Buy 100 of these, you can get an IG on the car. We're gonna put, yeah. we're gonna send you one of these if you win the contest. He having a ball. <laughs> this was destined to happen anyway, Fit. You know how you. Now the story of how the chain got robbed is pretty straightforward. However, the story of how the chain got retrieved is something different depending on who you ask. I'm going to talk about everyone's point of view that spoke on the incident. The first person's side of the story we will look at is the person who got robbed, aka Young Buck's homie Dite. Dite says that he doesn't want to get into the full details of what happened to retrieve the chain, but he does remember someone in Chicago by the name of Godfather. I don't know exactly what happened with the chain as far as them getting it back or whatever. You know, it was a story about Spider Loke and game and mm -hmm. situation. Shout out to them. Man, my Uncle Godfather in Chicago, man. Shout out to Uncle Godfather, man. He, he, he actually stood, he stepped in on that and located that chain the next day. Now, Godfather's name is going to be mentioned the most when it comes to how the chain got retrieved. I tried looking up a lot of information relating to Godfather, but I found nothing. I don't know what Godfather looks like. I don't know anything on him other than he was one of the biggest gang members in Chicago at the time, and basically everything was ran through him when it came to incidents like this. Here's where the story gets interesting from different perspectives. This is what Spider Loke's perspective is of the story according to Young Buck. After the robbery, Buck went on a journey in Chicago to try to get the G-Unit spinner back, and he started at the radio stations asking the people there if they knew who to talk to if any robberies happened relating to chains. The chain gets taken. Buck running around. He's trying to get the chain. Buck a real nigga ain't gonna front. Everywhere he go, he meet a real nigga. Detroit, nigga, Chicago. I can't take nothing from him. He a real nigga. I fuck with Buck. He running around Chicago trying to get the chain back. I'm like, yo, Buck gonna get smoked. He in Cabrini Greens. He gonna get smoked out there, 50. Yeah, he gonna get smoked, man running around the projects in Chicago. The people all referred him to the guy named Godfather. Buck met with Godfather at his Summer Jam concert show that he was hosting in Chicago. Then during that moment, something happened that turned a whole new twist to the story. Buck is saying when he got to, uh, when the chain got took, he was out there doing radio promos. When the chain got took, he went back to the radio station and asked the people, if something get taken from you in this area, who are you supposed to holler at to try to get it back? They directed him to this dude named Godfather. So Godfather supposed to be this OG. But it was having a summer jam that summer. Godfather was throwing the concert. He's the promoter. Not one of the promoters. This is his show. When Buck went to the concert to try to get his chain, the Godfather dude told him, stay right here. Don't leave. I'm going to help you get your chain, youngster. And throughout all that, he said he was walking through these dark halls. Every 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 few steps he went, people was there just smoothly stopping one of his securities. You can't go no further. And he said, I look, I only got one left. He said, without me knowing, somebody like, all right, homie, you straight. Before the next he know it, he was making his round last corner by himself. They did it so smooth. Buck, during that meeting with Godfather, ran into a guy named Jojo Capone, who was a Chicago native that was well-connected in the streets. Jojo Capone was someone that was running around with the game. The game was signed to G-Unit at this point, so the connection was already there. Buck recognized Jojo Capone from a 2004 Smack DVD freestyle that the game and Jojo did. Because of this connection, Buck then thought it would be easy to get the chain back, but according to Spider Loke, when Buck called game and told him that his homie Jojo had the chain, the price then went up from the initial ask of 20000 to 100000 He said... At one point when he got to try to get his chain back, Jojo Capone from Chicago came out to speak to him. He 
He said he talked to this dude, Jojo, Jojo Capone. He's trying to get his chain back. He's a G unit spinner. He said, look at the dude. He like, he tell him, young buck tell him, like, hey, I seen you, you was on a DVD with game. You game homeboy. This should be cool. Like, okay, if you got the chain, I seen you. He like, the dude got kind of like embarrassed, like, didn't know he was gonna recognize him. He said, the dude like went, they took a break, got on the phone. And whatever price that he had told him at first, he wanted 20000 for the chain. He said, once he, he said, Buck say, hold on. He called game. Like, hey, bro, I'm out in Chicago. The, the chain, nigga, I seen on your DVD. Oh, shit. He said, after he talked to game, the dude came back and wanted five. To, first, he wanted 20000 Now he wanted 100 And the game rapped about this incident on his diss track towards G Unit titled 300 Bars and Running. Hey, you got right for your spinning G Unit chain in Chicago. I call my Jojo to get it back. He had the shit in his hands and you ain't had a 10 stacks. Picture that. I thought we was G. The NJC ran a show that I did the shit. Jojo Capone in this situation was acting like the mediator for the chain. The people who robbed it were looking for money while Jojo was just looking to be the mediator and get a cut of whatever the sale was going to be. This is when Jojo Capone's side of the story comes in. He says that the story of him trying to increase the price on the chain or him having anything to do with the robbery is false and that he was simply just trying to help G-Unit in that situation because of the game being affiliated as well. So it's like I get the chain back. But then, of course, you're going to hear the whispers like as if we the ones took it and now we're trying to sell it back to them. So I felt like me trying to do those good deeds, I, I had swore to myself like I would never do it. I never do that ever again. I, I don't care what happened to nobody. Don't call me no more because mm -hmm. I genuinely was trying to help. And now if I'm hearing whispers like they don't know if I had something to do with it or not, I was like, I'm good on that. I, I don't care what happened. You know, don't call me for nothing. Ultimately, Buck then decided that it's not worth the price of 100000 and headed back to Atlanta without letting Godfather know. This is when Spider Low gets involved in trying to retrieve the chain back. Spider Low, who at the time wasn't affiliated with G-Unit at all and just got out of a label deal with Suge Knight, caught word of the robbing in Chicago. He had some friends in Nashville that would be around Buck, so through them he knew Young Buck was heading to Atlanta and decided to pull up at his hotel. Spider then says Young Buck explains the story of the robbery and how he spent days in Chicago trying to get it back. Instead of showing concern, Spider Look took this opportunity to spit a freestyle, which confused everyone at that time, but it got Buck's attention. So by the time he came to Atlanta, 50 wasn't taking no phone calls from him because of the whole shit. He was waiting till he saw him in person to speak to him. And the cast of, we was from Nashville was so close in his circle that when Young Buck got to Atlanta, he had to go straight to the radio station. But the people we with was so tight with him that we was in his hotel room before he got to his room. Okay. So we in there kicking and smoking it with his, with, his with, a, with a portion of his road crew. So by the time he came from Chicago to Atlanta, Went to the radio station, got to his room. It's a group of his homies in the room with some cats that he don't know, which includes me. Yeah. So this shit just happened a couple of days ago. He get right in the room. I'm like a fly on the wall sitting in the corner. And he like giving, he telling a story from the moment, every detail, how the chain got took, because it got taken from detail. So it didn't get taken from him. He talked about when DT first came and asked him to wear it to the club. And he's telling the story about what happened all the way for him trying to go back and get the chain back. Shout out to Godfather and uh and Jojo Capone from Chicago. But in the midst of all that, I swear to God, he telling this story, it's an important that story. I just start rapping a cappella, drown him out. After the freestyle, Spider Loke then realized from Buck's story that Buck saw a lot of people with made men chains on. Spider Loke then knew that his friend J.O. Felony made music with made men and that he could make some connections possibly. So he got on the phone with J.O. J.O. then knew JoJo who was connected with Game and this is where things got even crazier when it comes to Game and G-Unit. Spider Loke says when he called Game about the G-Unit chain, Game was initially confused because Spider Loke had nothing to do with G-Unit. When Spider Loke asked him about the chain, the Game was on speakerphone and said fuck G-Unit and the chain. Of course, Buck heard that, and Spider recalls even possibly Tony Ayo being on a three-way phone call and hearing it. And when he started talking about his experience that he went through in Chicago and trying to get his shame back, certain names was popping up. 
that seemingly could help him get his chain back. One of them was jail felony in my mind frame because he told me he saw, that's the homie, he told me he saw a lot of made men chains while he was moving through the process. All I knew is jail had did an album with the made men. I knew deep down it wasn't no connection, but I tried to like, I called Jay on speaker right in front of the bus. The names that's coming up, I'm familiar with, yeah. I'm finna try to tap in with. Mm -hmm. So I called Game, which I know is f his head up that I give a f about a G on the chain. Right. But I don't get, immediately I'm like, hey, cuz, check this out. The chain that was took in Chicago, my brother was there at the location. I feel like the chain got took for me. Game not having no clue that Young Buck is listening or I'm in. I'm, oh, shit. oh, damn. Okay. F them spider we from Compton. I don't give a f about them. F that chain. So Buck got to hear this with his own ear. Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you what this said or none of that. I even think Yayo was on a three way. I had just met him wow. through the phone. So they both heard it. So bam. Um, he also and they was, were all cool with each other. All cool. It was a, this was the biggest shock of their life at the time. And then, but Yayo was saying at the time, I told you I don't trust that Y'all fucking with it. Yeah. And I was on the phone when Spider Low called you. Your punk ass said you ain't want no problems. Jojo Capone eventually got Young Buck and Godfather on the phone. And Godfather was essentially upset Young Buck left without letting him know because he wanted to get the chain back for him. This is where Spider Loke steps in again and says he spoke to Godfather about his status in LA. Godfather then says, well, if you're from LA, then you should know I'm well connected with people like Suge Knight. And for Spider Loke, this was the perfect person's name to be dropped because Spider Loke just got done being signed to Suge Knight. So Spider says, if you're connected with Suge, you ask him about me, Spider Loke. And that's when the phone call ended. According to Spider Loke, a couple hours went by and Godfather called and said, you're going to get the chain back and you better thank Spider Loke, which then officially put Spider Loke in a label situation deal with g -Unit. Godfather I left you on your own and that's when Jojo Capone popped up. The game conversation came. So it happened when he tried to raise the price, Buck like, man, tell him keep it, fuck that. He leave town without letting Godfather know. So now he's in Atlanta and now he's in Atlanta but somehow throughout the politic and we get back on the phone with Godfather, but I'm in the picture now. So I'm gonna pick up where I left off. The Godfather name like, yeah, I'm from um, I'm from LA, wooty wooty whoop. My brother was involved with that chain and da 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 and we trying to get it back. But I'm a young nobody. And the Godfather dude tell me like, well, if you from LA, homie, I'm gonna let you know what level I'm on. He's trying to impress me. Mm. He like, when I touch LA, I touch down with cats like shit night. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I use that opportunity to like put extras on who I am. Yeah. I'm like, well, if you f with Suge Knight, ask no. I didn't go smooth. I went like extra, like ask Suge about me. I'm my name, Wooty Whoop. I'm from Wooty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause like I had remember I had I had just like um, left Suge amicably. And then I got to clicking with these cats, and me and Suge was still in communication. We f***ed around, we politics, was whatever. So I knew what it was, and I didn't know, even though I know Suge reputation, I still anticipated he could have said some bullshit. I took a chance to over-project and represent, like, oh, you f*** with Suge, well, ask Suge about why, 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 why. And long story short, hours later, a phone call came into our camp, and they told us that, Tell Buck he gonna get his chain back and he could thank the spider nigga. After he went and talked to Suge, whatever Suge told him, motivated him apparently to make sure that uh, he got the chain back. Now, this story is mainly from Spider Loke's point of view. Jojo Capone just said he was the mediator, but he also mentioned Godfather. Dite never went into details of how the chain got brought back, but he also mentioned Godfather. Now, if you ask 50 Cent and Tony Yeo about the story of the G-Unit chain, they'll tell you something completely different in how the chain was retrieved. 50 Cent says it was the Flores twins from El Chapo's cartel that retrieved the chain for him. 
The Flores twins were heavy drug traffickers in the early 2000s. They were moving roughly 300 kilos of cocaine a week and brought in millions of dollars. During 2004, they were the biggest drug dealers in Chicago and even had expanded to Los Angeles, Atlanta, New York, and many other locations. 50 Cent says the Flores twins got approached by one of the robbers offering the G-Unit chain for a price. Margarito Flores, who goes by Jay, saw this as an opportunity to make a connection with 50 Cent. So according to 50 Cent, the Flores twins who had drugs moving in Chicago put a halt to all the drugs being provided in Chicago and demanded that they get the Gio and the spinner chain or else no one would be provided with any drugs. This then put pressure on Godfather, who was one of the leaders in the Chicago gangs that were allegedly selling drugs. With no drugs coming to them, they ultimately decided to give the chain back to the Flores twins, who then contacted 50 Cent's people and brought the chain back to them, which then made a connection with 50 Cent. Both Jay and, and Peter Flores, well, I, I came in contact with them in 2004. I'm on a tour running around and bucking them ended up in Chicago. So... One of the dudes in his entourage decided they want to go out and party, bro. So he goes to Cabini Green Projects. Bro, in Chicago, no. he goes to Cabini Green Projects and goes to a party that they have in, in the projects and knocks on the door and shows them the G unit spinner piece. Like, yo, what's up, G unit? Let me in. Whoa. They let him in, they let him out, no peace. Yo, you know who got the chain back? Them El Chapo twins. Them Spanish. <laughs> you know how that <laughs> shit go. <laughs> them was like, yo, we didn't know it was them at the time. We just found out like later on. And you know, you know Gabby. Yeah, no. Gabby called, yo, we need the chain back. Call them Spanish. Nobody gets no work in Chicago. Nobody's getting no work in Chicago until the chain come back. Because they took it, the dudes they robbed and took it to Jay from the Flores. He immediately, when he realized that the main diamonds, they took it to him because he would be the guy that could pay for it, that much for it. You know what I'm saying? At the time, they, they moved over 130 tons of cocaine and heroin in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So if you look, like $2 billion worth of drugs they sold a lot. When they go to them with the piece, he looks. He said, no, nah, it's not right. But he gave him a little something, and then he gave the piece back. So he, he saw it as an opportunity to make a relationship. Look, this, the chain came back. Chain. Buck tried to, <laughs> Gabby made that call. The Flores twins, them, and come on, them work with El Champo, bro. They fucking with Sinaloa content, all them, man. They was making money, bro. They, them, had so much bread, it was ridiculous. Like Once the Flores twins were released from prison, 50 Cent says he decided to work with them for their new podcast show, which premiered in 2022 called Surviving El Chapo, the twins who brought down a drug lord. This is 50 Cent's side of the story on how the chain was retrieved. However, there is one more rumor online that I couldn't confirm as anything factual. The other story is that 50 Cent allegedly put money on the heads of the individuals who robbed the chain at $50,000 each. Once word got out, the individuals immediately shipped the chain overnight to 50 Cent. But there is no factual stories that this ever happened, simply an online rumor. Where, where I'm at, the price of life, where I grew up at, the price of life is cheap. So if, if you got the money, if, if you got the bag, it's going to happen. When you drop it, it's a go. So tell me who, who, is the, the, oh, you think I won't drop the bag? That's what you think? No, I, I Look, hey, you got to be kidding me. Like, I'm that's just, the easiest I'm thing just in the world. asking. And then you say, and you got to get, and I got the team. I got to come, I got to, you're stronger than linebackers. My lawyer's the. After the chain was finally returned, DT still had an issue with 50 Cent due to him causing the whole incident in the first place. He was sent home by 50 Cent for roughly four months. He finally ended up getting a call from Sean Money XL to come out to where Buck and he were. DT thought that because he got this call, that 50 Cent made the move to bring him back. So he ended up coming back for the first time around G Unit and 50 Cent, and it was during the Candy Shop music video shoot. He saw 50, and 50 saw him. Then he said to DT he needs to speak to him. So anyway, they had seen me on for about three, four months, and uh, I got a call, and it was shot money. Okay. And he was like, uh, your plane, your flight is booked for this weekend. And I hadn't talked to nobody. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what? I, 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 evidently 50 said I can come back out there. Right. But I'm knowing, too, when you get in trouble out there, you don't see them people no more. 
Right. So like, how do I come back? I can ruffle the G on the chain. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But little do I know, this they don't even know I'm coming. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> this was crazy. We get off the up. I mean, I kiss my flight. You know. Now, now I'm feeling like, okay, I'm back at it. You know, 50 know I'm coming. I can be confident. I fucked up. Right, Let me get right. myself together. Right. So uh I get out there. We in out we in California. Mm. I get out there, MTV is filming us. And uh it's the uh candy shop video. Okay. That's what we're doing. It's a mansion. So when we on the way from the airport to the mansion to the video shoot, I say, everybody oh uh, hi, so I say, hey, shot money. 50 know I'm coming, right? You know what I'm saying? So they like, yeah, you good, tell you know. So they start back talking. And I'm like, wait a minute, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't seem too yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. What you mean? Yeah, you all right, <laughs> You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So shot money like, no, I tell you, you good. So we pull up at the mansion. They clean out of the van. All of them, banks, buck, everybody getting out. Fifth is standing outside the mansion with a security guard talking to him. Yeah. He, I never forget he had his mink on. That mink he had on in the video. Yeah. So he got the mink on and he talking to the security guard. I'm looking out the van trying to read his face. Yeah. To see, he know this is Cashville van pulling up. Yeah. Because he know they're going to get bucked. So I'm trying to read his face to see if he like, okay, take him and he could. So I'm looking at him. He just talking to the security guard. He ain't even look at our van. Yeah. So everybody jump out of the van. It's one left in the van and the driver said hey man you guys got to get out yeah yeah because i'm stalling yeah. i don't know what's going on <laughs> last time they seen me i got ride for the chain so i left on that turn with 50 i knew so i'm like let me just see this big mob i'm gonna have to tussle with this big mob the lady grab me man right so to nick the last dude in the van was it beef it was one of my and they know be around fifth every day. So I said, hey, bro, do fifth know I'm coming back out here? He said, tell you, I don't think so. What? <laughs> you better fix your shoulders. Yeah. And when I seen his shoulders go, I knew something ain't right. Said, yeah. I don't think so, Tay. Yeah. I said, he need to wait till they get me here and right. tell me that. Right. Drive said, hey, man, I got to go. Right. I jump out the van. I jump out the van. I'm looking at filth. I ain't again like the house. I ain't looking at the match. I ain't looking at people on the set. Right. None right, of that. Right, I'm trying right. to read this face. Right. Bro, I'm walking up, looking at him, walking up. He talking to the security guard. So then he look up. Right, right. I said, well, he look. <laughs> but he, he, he ain't significant say it. Yeah, he looked, but he yeah, really. Yeah. But he still, it was a still look like. Right. So, boom, he told the security guard, so I walk up. I said, what up, big bro? He said, what up, Tay? He give me doubt. When he give me doubt, he said, I need to holler at you. I said, all right. Yeah. So when he left, he gave me doubt, so I need to holler at you. Yeah. He turned back around and started talking to the security guard. My dumb ass stayed right there. <laughs> right. That nigga with Tom security I looked up, see him again. Not right now, Tay. Right, right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. right go right, ahead. Right. Go ahead. We need to talk. What right, you talking about? Go right. ahead. I can't look at the booties. Right. Smoke I can't weed. Smoke nothing. Yeah, because you talking about we got to talk. And it My don't be good out there when Phil got to talk to you. After this, DT said 50 Cent spoke to him in the back of the trailer and made it clear to him that he was responsible for DT's safety and that he needs to be an artist and not a goon running around doing random things. Walking around the set. I'm, I'm enjoying everything, so I go to the trailer. The crew on the trailer, we smoking, we rolling up. They playing yeah. the music, we vibing. Boom! I don't got he done let me chill for about two, three hours. I'm thinking hey, it can't be that serious, right, bro? We in there smoking and shit. He come up on the trailer. Like, yeah, what y'all doing here? Buck, what's how many how many weeds you got, Buck? Right. Buck got like eight ounces, all different colors. Is really four, Ooh. four ounces, all different colors. I mean, different kinds. Feel like, yo, you leave tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> like, how you gonna smoke all that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Look like, oh, we gonna smoke this, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. So everybody in the thing, I'm in the cut. 
when he come up on the trailer, I'm watching him <laughs> right, like a right. predator watching the animal. Finna, yeah. He looked up. He in a good mood though. Yeah. He's yeah. in a good mood. So he look up. He see me. He say. Yeah. In front of everybody. Yeah. So everybody like, oh. So he walk us in the back part of the trailer. Yeah. Close the thing. Buck, come here. Put my buck back there. And he pull us back there. He put me in the headlock and he put Buck in the headlock. Yeah. And he was like, look, y'all, this is like my little brothers. When y'all come out here on this road, I got to make sure y'all get back home to y'all parents. Mm -hmm. So y'all, my responsibility once y'all leave, y'all parents. So, Tay, I'm going to need you to start acting more like an artist. Yeah. You don't need to be where the hyenas is at. Because we was getting to it, and I go back with the hyenas being shit. And she like, that's not for you. That's why I have them out here for that. Right. You need to be doing what Buck them do. You're an artist. So that kind of me up right I there. Because I didn't think he was looking at me as an artist. You understand? Yeah. And that, that made me feel more comfortable by myself. And he was like, yeah. He said, you, you, you need to stay out the way, though. You need to sit down somewhere, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Then he, yeah. let, he let us go in. That was it. The ironic thing about this whole story, according to 50 Cent, is that the G unit spinner chain that got robbed was a dummy chain and not the real one. It was a clone chain that was super cheap compared to the real G unit spinner chain and its value. When I had the, the G unit piece originally, if you looked at it, when you see me wearing it, Ebro, it was 300,000 I spent on, on the piece. All right. Mm. Because it was the biggest piece of jewelry that I bought at that point. When I took it off my neck, I didn't want to pay the insurance for it. So I had a dummy piece made. So the piece that they actually caught was the punk piece. Like that was the, the one with mouse knights in the joint. Yeah. That shit, I had that done because I wasn't going to pay the insurance to, to when it's not in my possession, I had to pay more of the, for the insurance for it. So I'm, I just put it in the safe, the real piece, and they was wearing the other joint. That is the story on how the G-Unit spinner chain got robbed and retrieved. It is a crazy twist of events from various different perspectives, but it's interesting nonetheless. Let me know what other chain snatching story you guys would like for me to cover, and would you guys like to see a part two to this documentary where I interview other people's perspectives that haven't spoken on the incident yet? That's it for today's video. If you guys want to support this channel further, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality. For just $3 a month, you can get my videos uncut and raw the way I intended them to be, but couldn't because of YouTube. Plus, you also get access to our Discord community where we have a great community talking about hip hop and various other things. It's very dope. So only $3 a month, I'd really appreciate the support. Also follow us on social media at QuakeGW and at Diverse Mentality. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.